tell you something else I watched on my phone yesterday uh, and on my computer on the YouTube was the latest offering from our friend of the platform and citizen journalist Charlie McCoy. And in case you haven't seen Charlie McCoy stuff, you go on and you search Charlie McCoy on YouTube and you watch. And what Charlie does, he'll take uh, news sources, stuff that's on the news, and he'll put in his own quite unique uh, commentary of it and make really good vids that are incredibly entertaining. He did run on the Fire and Fury documentary, which we featured last year on the platform, and many of you people responded incredibly positively to that and to Charlie. And he's just in the last week or so come out with a new one. And I'm not going to call it a piss take or a satire. It's something completely unique in itself, the way Charlie does what he does, with, I think, the most (laughs) um, laid-back, understated sort of narrative and commentary uh, that you'll see. And kind of sometimes you'll blink, if you blink, you'll miss Charlie's humour, even though I don't know if it is humour. It's just Charlie being Charlie. This one's called Web of Coincidence. And it's poking the borax uh, straight up the Web of Chaos documentary that was funded by you, the taxpayer. And, of course, it was all about the nutters from the Disinformation Project. And joining us to discuss his great, latest, greatest offering... Um, we are joined now uh, by Charlie McCoy. Charlie, how are you, mate? Happy New Year. Good morning, and to you too. Um, how you been, Charlie, first up, before we get into it? Um, not too much to speak of. It's flown, is it February yet? It's no, flown, not, well, no, it might be the first. It's the first today. It's the first of Feb, mate. Yeah, it felt like it was just Christmas yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it was. And it's probably too late for Happy New Year, Charlie. But you've been busy, mate. You've been busy delving into the world of woke journalism again. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. All right. So, look, for those who haven't seen it yet, and I know it's hard asking you this, can you tell us what Web of Coincidence is all about? Just give us a pricey. Okay, yeah, um... The day after the last time we spoke, that was Halloween last year, on 1 November, um, that was when it aired, the documentary Web of Chaos, and uh, it it coincided with a whole bunch of other stuff, similarly themed, that was going on at the same time, like um, a couple of days before it, the Justice Minister spoke about how hate speech reform is back on the um, cards and all that that hooey was going on at the same time. The that SIS was, one where they taught kids how to dob in their uh, hair yeah. plaiting parents? Yeah, and then a couple of days after that, the Human Rights Commissioner said that he's going to engage with the Prime Minister on how to, uh, you know, step up the fight and all that. Um, so that's what the coincidence is, or the coincidences are. And you thought you'd crack into all of that and give your unique view on it? Yeah. Yeah. Look, one thing, Charlie, I loved, and the most basic thing that I kind of missed in watching Web of Chaos, um, that you point out in Web of Coincidence, is that they had all these experts who were basically from the same organisation. Yeah. Yeah. So it was um, truly an echo chamber. I I think what these people did, they, they invented an area to be expert in, and then, then so when it comes up in the news, the journalist people need someone to go to. They've only got these people to go to. Yeah. Um, they still haven't answered, and we're still banging on about the disinformation project, Kate, Hannah, and this guy, what's his name, Hatatua? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they still really won't say who funds them and what their relationship is like with the government and what influence they have. But, boy, it strikes me, Charlie, that apart from um, the platform and you, most certainly, none of the news media that publish their expert reckons, which are just reckons, as you your, your mockumentary shows, none of the mainstream media ask hard questions of, of people like Kate Hanna as, and as to where her expertise comes from and who funds it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They're, they're showing they, they've got they've got a love affair with the media. If anything, the way they're treated, they're like um, gods on earth to them. It's silly. Yeah, um, but they also seem and you highlight some of the clips here. 
They also seem slightly unhinged, though I don't want to be personal. They seem quite odd people, quite obsessed people themselves. <laughs> With all that the compulsive washing and all that stuff, eh? Hey? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you, you, yeah, it's hard to not get personal about it, but the documentary focused so much time on what they're doing to cleanse themselves and all that, and so you, you can't sort of not go there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Charlie, did you try and talk to them for your documentary or reach out in any way? No, I didn't. I just, just, um, I'm, my commentary is just on sort of everyone else's commentary. Yeah. And you really looked at, and I love the way you've done this twice now, and, and you don't rush this because you're not working to a deadline. Um, but you also look how that particular documentary funded by New Zealand did on air fed into and reinforced after fire and fury what appears to be a very curated narrative about hate speech in this country, eh? There are Nazis everywhere, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who do you think's running that, Charlie? Who do you, where do you think these ideas come from? I think it's sort of an old trope. And they're um, it's just been repackaged for the times. Like uh, for, for for my entire life, someone was bad. You called them a Nazi. You know, it could be it could be a school teacher. It could be you know your coach or yeah. someone you don't like. You call them a Nazi. And this so these it's it's quite immature. And some people could argue that it's um, trivialising certain events of mm. um, world history. But yeah, I, I think it's just that it's just um, these people. They're all they they. This may sound rich coming from me. They're grown ups, but they're all just—they're a bunch of kids, really. They, you know, you're a Nazi. You're a Nazi. You know that's, you know. Yeah. Um, are you concerned, Charlie, that they get these experts, the Kate Hannas of this world, with? And her reason for never coming on the platform is that she's afraid for her life. Though I've never, and it's kind of in a roundabout way, saying that I'm a dangerous Nazi too. Really, uh, the platform's actually been named as part of a disinformation network or a hate network online. Um, what do you call the Kate Hannas, the disinformation projects, the Massey University academics who perpetuate these lies on the New Zealand public? Do you call them Nazis or just very, very naughty boys and girls? Um, well, I'm not above being immature sometimes. So if someone else is calling everyone a Nazi, you can... You can you, you can give it right back to them, I, I'm sure, as long as you don't um, get too overboard, or, you know. Yeah. I, I don't think why not. It's, it's um, yeah. not even fighting fire with fire. It's just being like, um, um, I am rubber and you are glue, if you know that old... If you're not thing. careful, Charlie, you're going to get on a list somewhere as a disinformation purveyor and a Nazi. I, <laughs> I'd imagine I already am. <laughs> you sound like that doesn't think, worry. You sound like that doesn't worry you too much, Charlie. Yeah, well, um, I so if the SIS are listening to me now, um, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying I have any evidence of that at all. But it, it's kind of it's not a huge worry because I'm I'm such a um, modest living person. I, I I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing anything wrong and they're going to be confronted with that and it's maybe going to help, help them um, change mm. the way they mm. think about things. So, Chad, now you are cool if we post your video on, on, on the platform so more people see it and link through to your YouTube? Yeah, that'd be cool, as. Okay, mate. And how many hits have you had now? I know you inevitably would have got the Sean Plunkett platform bump after the last time you were on here on November the 1st, but are you getting lots of people watching and interacting with you? Yeah, heaps of, oh, definitely there was a bump. Um, I don't do a whole lot of interacting. I'm sort of withdrawn, but um, yeah. Well, um, yeah, 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 lots, lots, of, lots of views. And, and I don't have Facebook and that, that sort of stuff, so on other stuff other than YouTube, there are... So, Charlie, you're not on Twitter or anything either, mate? No, I don't have anything. But that, that's yeah. actually, I, look, I, I, had a, I had a couple of weeks off all that over Christmas. It was one of the healthiest things I've ever done for myself. I did mean to ask just on a personal note, Charlie, how's the anxiety, how's life in general going? Um, I don't know. It's, 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 it
nothing to speak of really. I, I, I do a, a correction slightly. Um, um, it may have come up. I'm not. I'm not a beneficiary. Um, no. Uh, no, you said so, that last uh, time. Oh yeah, yeah. Just, just like this. So, as lame as my life is, like I'm. I'm not doing it tough in that regard there's yeah. a whole lot of people out there who are you know things aren't going as well yeah um Charlie, I'm going to absolutely recommend uh, Web of Coincidence, and I love the title because it, like the piece itself, was rather um, tongue in cheek. I'll tell you what it has kind of frustrated me, in the, and in the conversations I've had with many people over the break is, um, will this stop? Will the well demise, the political removal by her colleagues in the Labor Party of Jacinda Ardern, will this kind of wave of woke? Um, perhaps subside a little bit, Charlie. You got any feelings on that, whether or not the mad Kate Hannahs and Hattatuas will stop being the experts, whether or not the mainstream media will grow a brain? Well, I think because of Ardern's kindness stick, yep. um, this sort of stuff was allowed to get further than it would otherwise. Like, if you can just imagine Andrew Little or someone fronting it, and, you know, he's all gruff and angry and... Yeah. Like, and say, we need to censor the internet and all this, and like people wouldn't buy it. But if when Ardern was saying it, I guess people thought, oh, well, she's just trying to take care of us, our good old, you know, yeah. she's, a, she's a good lady. And, and, and Farfoy was sort of a bit like um, aloof too, but he sort of couldn't articulate what it was all about. And he, he, so, so Ardern was ultimately championing it. And, and with, without her, they, they, yeah, I don't know, maybe it will be, people will be a bit more skeptical if it's a. I mean, old man trying to tell us not to say things instead. Maybe it'll be different. Maybe. Yeah, but really, you do hi- hi- you do highlight, and, and often the other thing that got me, they were kind of just making a lot of this stuff up, Charlie. Yeah, I, I, they, they don't have to worry about um, like, like who, whoever, um, you know, the, the, the makers of Fire and Fury and uh, Paula Penfold. Yeah, yeah, it's the name that escaped me. Um, the, 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 well, these people, they're experts. You're not meant to challenge experts, and you know, so they're self-professed experts, you could argue. But um, what, what, there's no one, there's no counter view by someone who's equally um, got the letters behind their name or in front of their name or wherever you, wherever you express yeah. your expertise. Yeah. If you were going to compare, and you've made, as I said, uh, you've made, if you like, review or critical documentaries about both of them. If you were going to compare Web of Chaos with Fire and Fury, it was actually, journal- well, not journalistically, stylistically a better made piece of government propaganda, wasn't it? Yeah, Web of Chaos was, um, yeah, more interesting. And better shot. And not quite so blunt in its um, its brainwashing. Fire and Fury was a disaster. That was that was horrible. That was I mean, uh, and I point out some of it. The, the the music they play and the the putting people on billboards and all that. That yeah, was yeah. so weird. And that's, that's, how, that's not how a documentary is meant to work. You fabricating pictures of people up in the sky and everyone walking around like it's um some you know sci-fi movie or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you'd say, in terms of technicalities and everything, Web of Chaos was better. Does it have any more resonance, truth to it, or is it still the same old BS in a slightly nicer box? Yeah, well, aesthetically, it was all it was it was nice and colourful and bright and and stuff, and there was a lot going on. But it's it just it's shallow, wasn't it? Like there's you know, there's nothing under it other than all these people people are Nazis and they're coming to get you all and the way we can um, overcome that is to celebrate the kids when they do the climate strike and then everything will be as okay as it can be and it's sort of I don't know. <laughs> you've, you've <laughs> just summed up the whole kind of shtick of left wing politics and you see Charlie in one in one comment mate um Geez, I hope it changes. I, I think we're a better country than that, and I think you doing the sort of work you do uh, raises that possibility and sort of rest- restores my um, my faith in, in human nature and how pro- popular your stuff is. 
What are you working on next, or are you just sitting having a wee break before you decide who you're going to extract the borax from next? <laughs> Yeah, last time you asked me that, and I said I had nothing on the schedule. But and then you come up with this, you're just fibbing. You're a liar. <laughs> it happened the next day. I didn't even know it was going to be on. It was just very fortuitous. And, um, yeah, so maybe that'll happen again. Maybe something will be on TV tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, and I hate to say it, Charlie, I think if you were, and I probably get, tell me if I'm wrong, you're not the sort of guy that works to a schedule or anything. You're marching to the beat of your own drum. I think a kind of alternate or parallel commentary on the mainstream media coverage of the election would be so bloody funny from you. Which almost, now that I've asked you publicly, you'll probably definitely not do it. But I'm just saying, just think about it in that space. Oh, no, it's the other way around. Now I feel a little bit more obliged to maybe um, head in that direction. Yeah, but I think, look, I think it could be, if nothing else, Charlie, incredibly entertaining. <laughs> and good fun. Hey, I thoroughly recommend to everyone, mate, um, Web of Coincidence, which just so perfectly takes the mickey out of people who take themselves so seriously. We'll get it up on the site, Charlie. We'll get this interview up. Really nice uh, to talk to you, to you again. Um, glad to see you're still pumping out such great stuff, mate. Thank you. Good to talk oh, to oh the other thing, Charlie, you must be so glad. You're in the Hart Valley, aren't you? Yeah. Do you know Chris Hipkins? You must do it. Such a small country. Hey, about that. He's, yeah. He's from up right? So he's all going on about from the hut all the time. That's not even a real hut, is it? I knew this was going to come up. I knew this. Well, I'm from Porirua, Charlie, so I think you're all middle class pretentious. Some, <laughs> so and so. Um, but oh, so he's from Upper Hut. Oh, he's not really. He's not really a hut guy, then, is he at all? It's not like well, Nine Eye. If, you, if you're saying you're going down to the hut, you're not going to Upper Hut, you're going to Queensgate or whatever it's called now. Yeah, well, I, I never go there, Charlie. The only reason I go to the Hut Valley or anything like that is to play golf at Heratonga um, or Shandon. I don't go to the hut. I don't have a passport or rug boots. I don't either. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Hey, we will talk again soon. Well done. Well done. Lovely, lovely uh, having a yarn with you. That's Charlie McCoy, citizen journalist. He just does some great stuff. So we're going to get his latest mockumentary. And, and I don't even, I don't think I can actually explain what a Charlie uh, McCoy documentary mockumentary is. The latest one is called Web of Coincidence. And it is, um, it's just a very straight up sensible analysis of the latest we're all Nazis, disinformation project thing called um, Web of Chaos. And <laughs> Charlie just has this wonderful, understated way of dealing with his subject matter. And he just says the things that when you're watching something, oh, oh that, that doesn't make any sense. Charlie will say, that doesn't seem to make any sense. And it's just, it's almost like your conscience sitting on your soul, your shoulder telling you, don't believe everything they say. It's great stuff. Um... Sean, Sean, <laughs> listen to this. Congratulations, Sean, and the, and the platform. You just got a shout-out in the MediaWorks National Restructure meeting this morning from Cam Wallace. Laugh out loud. Oh, someone's <laughs> leaking out of MediaWorks. I wonder what the shout-out was, that you should be more like Sean Plunkett? Well, I did used to work for you, Cam, but you didn't seem keen on that. In fact, you paid me to go away. Mm, go away. Go broke. Uh, this text says, Charlie is very clever. Enjoy all his vids. Yep. Um, I love Charlie. Such an unassuming guy. Looking forward to watching this video. He needs a job with the platform soon. Such a clever guy. Look, I, I don't know. I think probably a job with the platform was the last thing Charlie needs. And he, Charlie's one of those guys, you strike me. He strikes me. You leave Charlie to his own devices. Let Charlie do Charlie. And he'll spread some love, joy and enlightenment around the world. So I actually think Charlie, the last thing Charlie needs is a job with the platform. Though I'd be more than happy to have, have him if he wanted one. Sean, the thing I love about Charlie is he has no idea how good he is. I am surprised some journalistic entity has not snapped him up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Charlie is far more confident talking to you this time. He comes across as a very authentic and talented 
I can't wait to watch his doco. The great stuff about Charlie's stuff... Eh, I mean, it's an, I'm an uh, investigative journalist and I've spent hours on this. He just looks at stuff and say, hang on. And he does a Google search. Yeah, but like one, the guy at Hatatuta, the Sri Lankan guy, I'm a shooter Hatatuta, from, who's Kate Hanna's mate at the Disinformation Project. He points out that this guy says, well, I was pretty well responsible for the Arab Spring and the creator of the Twitter account that did that. And Charlie, without being accusatory or saying you're a drongo, says, yeah, but that was in 2007 in the Arab Spring or 2008, and the Arab Spring wasn't till 2010. So he said, we could just say he got his dates wrong. And then Charlie says something along the lines of, or he's a completely <laughs> self-delusional narcissist and just leaves it hanging there. Just leaves it, to, it hanging there. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And really, when you look at Kate Hanna, who, Kate, you're welcome to come onto the platform. We're not going to kill you. We won't cause you any uh, harm. You can do it by phone. So you're not in physically any danger. If you want to come in, we'll hire you a bodyguard. Um, she won't, of course.